Father, we give thanks for another day of life, and we ask for your presence, your Holy Spirit, uh, to be with us and to instruct us and guide us concerning truth, concerning the end time events of this world's history. Father, just uh, I ask your help in helping me to present this in a way which is clear and according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the title of this presentation is called Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And um, this, the idea of Hiroshima and Nagasaki having any impact on this movement began to be um, seen in December 2016, uh, just after the Holland camp meeting. Uh, before the light of midnight and the midnight cry, Waymarks came to the movement, which would be in March 2013. I think that the line of the movement, just correct me if I'm wrong in anything, was this was generally the line we had. There was no midnight midnight cry message, it was 9-11, and then we were just waiting for the Sunday law to happen. And then with Ezra 7-9 opening up the scene, the midnight cry, Waymark. And then <clears throat> sometime after that, 2014 period, uh, there was the midnight Waymark as well. Then in um, December 2016, there was more light concerning these here events. It's, uh, the message started with Daniel 11, and then it seemed to be as if we were returning to Daniel 11 again uh, when in Wales, Chawatu and Kimberley presented Daniel 11, which gave light upon these way marks as being represented by the Battle of Raffia. And this way mark was Paneum. This was then presented the following week in Holland, in, in December 2016, and uh, that was when I, I was there as well, I met Adelio there. Um, so after this here was connected to the events, I came home and I googled Panium and I realised it was where I had been in 2006 on a visit to Israel. And uh, it was a place of co which was called Caesarea Philippi. I recognised that that was uh, the same place. In the, the the town where it's called now is called Banyas. Um, they call it it's, it's, so. This is like the the Palestinian name. <clears throat> but there's a, it's called B Banyas. I think it's quite a lot of Arab towns, cities in Palestine, they don't really pronounce the P, they turn, turn it to a B, so you have like, Nablus would be like Naples, so they have like, instead of Panium, they have Banyas. <clears throat> and then after I seen that there, I emailed Jeff and said um, that this was lining up with Caesarea Philippi, it was Desire of Ages, chapter 45, it relates to the, the goat god, Pan, and it's where we get the word panic from, and pandem pandemonium. <clears throat> and then, Jeff then took that, and just Pandora's box came up, and pandemic, and he, he put a lot of other uh, pans in there, panorama. Um, but attached to that email was, um, something that Emma Byant had said to me on the way back from the, the camp meeting, um, where she said that uh, she related to be, because we were talking about the 45th president and about this, she related to the events of 1945 with the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs, and that there was a sixth, one was on the sixth and one was on the ninth, and that the UN was then sorted then, and that was like representing the Seventh Kingdom. So it was, we are turning this here into here, 
And I think initially we were looking at this being nuclear attacks. This would be on the 6th. Rafia would be on the 6th. And Midnight Cry was on the 9th. And initially it was, we were thinking like it was a hot war. But then uh, Elder Jeff was here presenting that. And then he was sort of backing out of it, maybe allowing a cyber attack to be the result of these things. But before we got to Rafia and Panem as being r r connected to the Midnight and Midnight Cryway marks, there had been a study done on Matthew chapter 20, largely based on Matthew 20, um, where we have um, the, the, where we get the phrase, the 11th hour workers, and it connects it. We have the We'll just read Matthew chapter 20, um, verse 1. We'll just turn there. It says, verse 1, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire labourers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the labourers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye into the vineyard and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise and about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them why stand ye here all the day idle they say unto him because no man hath hired us he saith unto them go ye also into the vineyard and whatsoever is right that shall I that shall ye receive so when evening was come the lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward call the labourers and give them they're higher, beginning from the last unto the first. Um, there was an application made of this. That this was the morning. From what I believe, uh, the third hour was lined up with 9-11. And then the midnight cry, the midnight and midnight cry by marks was the sixth and ninth hours. And then... Uh, the Sunday Law was the eleventh hour, and then you have even come, and even comes, no man can work, so that's like a, the close of probation. Um, so we have these here, six and nine, connected with midnight and the midnight cry period. Uh, but recent developments. Um, or light concerning July 18, we've connected uh, the Nagasaki and well the Hiroshima bombing on the 6th of August to July 18 to an event which relates to midnight or to um, an event which really relates to Islam. So that this here I mark the 6th relates to Islam rather than to the King of the North, the king being defeated by the King of the South. So that was the, the original. <coughs> but we're now we're, we're seeing um, connections with Islam rather than the King of the, of the South and the King of the North. We've done this here. Uh, this sort of light came out about last year around October time. And uh, we just, or just uh, after that, so earlier on this year actually, we, we understood that on the 6th of August 1945 was the 26th day of the fourth month. And this connected with uh, the 26th day of the fourth month, which we find in, some, in the Josiah Lich's prophecy of uh, the 391 years and 15 days of Revelation 9.15. That it begins, there's a 150 year time prophecy which begins in 1299 and it begins on the 26th day of the fourth month 
and that was on the 27th of July. And it ends on the 27th of July, 1449. Also on the 26th day of the fourth month, but that's on the Gregorian calendar, while the other one was in the Julian. And then if you project 391 years uh, from there, it will take you to the 27th of July, uh, 1840. <coughs> and then we, we've connected that to the 20, uh, added another 180 years from there, rep represented by the six months, taking a day for a year. And that will bring us to the Gregorian 26th day of the fourth month in July 18, 2020. And it was found from the 6th of August, 1945, when the Hiroshima bomb um, occurred at 8.15 a.m. 8.15 connected with can be a connection to the eighth day of the fifteenth, uh, sorry, yeah, the fifteenth day of the eighth month, which we can take as a symbol of the fifteenth of August, yeah, August fifteenth, in eighteen forty-four, when the Exeter accompanying of Samuel Snow, uh, his presentations. It's uh, three three nine one zero weeks and five days, so we've taken this here as, as a symbol that, which connects. Um, What's three nine one? 3910 weeks. What is? Period this is between the 6th of August 1945 and the 18th of July 2020. Okay. And so <coughs> this is, I'm lining up, this is the 14th and the 15th day, the midnight cry of Samuel Snow in Exeter. And so rather than connecting it to the, uh, the King of the South and the King of the North. Uh, I'm proposing that it's actually representing attacks by Islam, and it's represented by the 6th and the 9th. There's a doubling there. There's two events. The 6th represents um, Hiroshima, and the 9th represents Nagasaki. And we're connecting these, both of these now to the midnight cry. Um, Thereafter, uh, the message therefore goes to them for our workers until the, the close of probation. So them for our workers, the ninth and the Nethanum's lining up. And so I'll just maybe illustrate this rather than... So we still have midnight here. So we're seeing the midnight cry. This is the 9th of November, 2019. I'm proposing that the midnight cry is these here, this here six and nine. And this is uh, lining up with the 18th of July, 2020. I'm, I'm placing the nine um, on the 25th of December, uh, 2021. Uh, if you I have done a study on the 777. Um, so you, but you're saying the 9 is right close to the Sunday law, right? Yes, I'm actually saying that with this here, we recognize that there's like a swelling of, of the loud cry. That you can have a way mark here as well, which is represented uh, there's angels come down, and uh, there's like a specific way mark. Although the message begins here, the Sunday law, I'm saying this is the close of probation for the Seventh day Adventist church. So that would be the priests and the Levites. And the, so there's therefore a swelling of the, there's a, like a Sunday law there but it swells until the close of probation. So you can maybe connect this here, the 11th hour workers, there you go. to there as well. So you have like a 9-11 there and a 9-11 there. That's what okay. I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Sorry. yeah. 
That's okay. Well, I'll have that in mind as well, so. But yeah. if somebody hasn't heard it and they see that, they'll, they'll be confused. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> so this here is kind of seen here as well. You um, connect it. Maybe you can justify how you came to presenting the third hour of the Matthew 20 parable to 9-11. Okay. Well, the, the easy one is that's the empowerment of the third angel's message. So you have the number three there. Um, you have the, the judgment of the living beginning. So you, you have your process of priests and Levites, Nethanims, begins there, first day of the first month. Before that time, Ezra's in Babylon, and that period of 1989 to 9-11 is a wilderness time period. Um, you can show it's a wilderness. And uh, we had other, a couple other thoughts yesterday when we discussed this, but I think the number three was the third angel's message more than anything else. Yeah, and you relate it to Ezekiel oh, the judgment. 37. Yeah, in Ezekiel 37, the first message, it just brings the bones together with the flesh, but they're not alive. At 9-11, they come alive, so now you have uh, people standing up um, for the judgment of the living. Latter rain begins. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have people going out the vineyard here, but in a sense, they're dead. Yep. In a sense, they're, they're just still, their body's formed, but they're still lacking life. And they need the, the, uh, the angel to come down and breathe life into them. Um, so if, if you do a study on the names of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you find Hiroshima means White Island, and Nagasaki means Long Cape. And there was a, a declaration made in Potsdam in Germany. It was on the evening of the 26th, but by the time um, Japan heard of it, it was on the 27th of July. And we've seen that the 27th of July is a date that has connections with Islam and the first and second woes. And Potsdam means beneath the oaks. And Japan, it's, uh, we have connections there with Islam in the sense that the first suicide plane flyers, uh, pilots, were called the Kamikaze. And um, this word means divine wind. So, divine wind. divine wind, and we can relate that to the east wind, 9-11 um, with pilots flying into buildings. Um, so, Hiroshima happened on the 6th of August, which we can tie into being noon on the, the Hebrew day. It would be 12 p.m., so the 6th hour. This would be the 6th hour, the 6th of August. And the 3rd hour being, um, sorry, this, this, this 3 p.m. would be the 9th hour. Sorry, no, sorry, to, yeah, no, yeah, it is. The 9th hour would be 3 p.m. In the, in the Hebrew day. And that would relate to the 9th of August. And uh, to the date of Nag Nagasaki, the bomb there. And these happened in 1945. And um, so we can connect 1945 to Panium in the sense that the Tsar of Ages, chapter 45, is called the foreshadowing of the cross, where Jesus takes his disciples to Caesarea Philippi, which is uh, Panium, the place where the Battle of Panium took place. And... Um, he then tells the disciples that he's going to the cross. And uh, you have Peter there. His name represents 
the 144,000. So you, you can maybe tie in the 144,000 happening uh, at this here point, the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Was, was there an old understanding that the Seventh-day uh, seventh Adventist Church composed the 144,000? <clears throat> that then went to do a, do a work of harvesting uh, the eleventh hour workers. Uh, so nineteen forty five connects with that, and we have we're now living in the time of the forty fifth president of the United States, and he's the fourth of five siblings. And Malachi four verse five talks about before the coming of the day of the Lord, which we would place the Sunday law and the day of the Lord happening really in this period, the 11th hour workers. And so we're going to see Elijah here as well. And if you look at 1 Kings 18, he, the, you also have the morning mentioned in, uh, in that there chapter. And you have noon mentioned, which we can relate to the 6th hour. And then when Elijah uh, builds the altar with 12 stones, 12 being representing the 12 tribes and the 144,000. He then prays and, and fire comes down from heaven. So we could relate that to Nagasaki and a nuclear strike on the 9th. And we could also tie in that chapter with... Uh, the sixth as well. Um, so there's like a, a dual application in the sense that the sixth um, are, or, or um, which we're lining up with Hiroshima, comes after the 45th president's, it's, it's, it's when he is in office three and a half years, or 1260 days. Uh, he begins in the 20th of January 2017, and by the time of July 18, 2020, it's a time period of three and a half years, and it's in the, in the, in the story of First Kings 18. There's a, a three and a half year famine, and then fire comes down. So we're seeing three and a half coming here, and then fire coming down. So we we even relate the story of First Kings 18 to both these here dates. You're saying that from Donald Trump's first inauguration until July 18th is 1,260 days? Yes. I haven't exactly put in exactly how many days it is, but we know that from the 20th of January uh, 2020, <coughs> that it's three years yep. then from his inauguration, and then it's exactly 180 days from that period until we get to July 18, um, July 18, 2020. So 180 days is six months, so we can plug in there a 1260 and a three and a half year time period. Um, we also see these, the third R, the sixth R, and the ninth R related in the story of the cross if you read Mark chapter 15, verses 25 and verses 33, well, actually, we'll just, we'll just return there. Mark 15, 25. And it was the third hour. And they crucified him. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Thank you. So, I think these are the three key passages where you have these here, third, sixth, and ninth. And the Matthew 11, 20 gives us the 11th hour workers as well. So, this is where the main uh, connections. So, you're saying the third hour he was crucified? Yes. And then he's going to rest in the grave, ascend to heaven and come back down and breathe upon his disciples. Mm -hmm. And that's what we mark as 9-11, that mm -hmm. dissension. So the number three is associated with the 9-11 also from that perspective because it's the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Um, 
I'm sorry if I got you off track. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so we have um, the foreshadowing of cross. There was something I was going to say there, but it's, it's gone. Go back there. You're still in Mark 15 when I interrupted mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just tie in Mark 15, 33, with this here. Uh, this year. Um, we see here from the 9th of November to December 25, there's uh, 777 days. This is 2021. And um, we've uh, divided this here up into several periods from uh, the 9th of November to the 18th of July, there's 252 days. And then if you flip another 252 days after that, you come to the 27th of March, 2021. We're not signifying any event there, but we're just connecting that it is the 27th day of the third month. And from there, it's 273 days until the 25th of December, 2021. And we can also line up these 777 days with the, uh, the life of Lamech. He lived 777 years. So in plugging his, his life beginning on the 9th of November 2019 and his death then would be on the 25th of December 2021. If you do that, you find that his father, Methuselah, was 187 years old when Lamech was born. And when Methuselah was born, his father Enoch was 65 years old. So if you're going to convert that into days, it will take you to the 2nd of March uh, 2019 as when Enoch was born. I'm not identifying any specific event on these here dates, um, I'm, but they're just like way marks it's similar to the year 1449 and the 27th of July, uh, and that there date, we connect the second row beginning, but there's no specific event that occurs. It's just the end of 150, and then you begin the count of the 391 years and 15 days. Uh, if you do that, this, the Enoch was 65, and then Methuselah, it was 187. So in this year time period, Enoch, when Lamech was born, would be 252 uh, years old when Lamech was born. So we convert that today. So we have three periods of 252. We have a 777. And if you add 252 times 3 is 256 plus 777, that will bring us, uh, comes to 1533. And uh, I connected that, the 1533 to the time period of the 11th of August 1840 which was the end of the second woe to the close of probation 1844 it's a time period of 1533 days and uh, we also connect 1533 to the year of the Passover and both is Ellen White and Great Controversy uh, chap, uh, verse sorry page 611 says that the, the period from 1840 to 1844 was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. Uh, Ellen White says that the, when the law was given on Mount Sinai uh, in, in the year 1533, she doesn't say that year, but we can calculate it to that year, uh, that there was like a, a, the greatest manifestation of divine power ever in history. Um, we, we've connected... Uh, Mark 15.33 uh, to, to be in the cross as well. There was a study I did a few days ago which saw that the type of the tabernacle service related to one day of that related to the, what, how many days actual of Christ's holy place ministry uh, came to 1844 days. 21 hours and 15 minutes and, and 33 seconds. 
And so we can connect that uh, 1533 there uh, to the cross, and, and we could believe the cross was a, a glorious manifestation of the power of God. Uh, on the time face, the 21 hours and, and 15 minutes and 33 seconds, you can relate this to being 9.15 nine, nine, nine uh, on, on the clock as well. So in a sense there, you have the third hour to the ninth hour as well. Um, and that demonstration that gives you the, this here time would, would give you like the shape of the cross. And uh, Odilia asked me to point out that if you divide the square root, if you find the square root of 1533, it comes to 391, sorry, 39.15. There's some other decimals, but uh, it's, it's connected as well. And then if you minus 273, from uh, 1533, it comes to 1260 as well. And you, and you said there that from of the 11th of August, 1840, until the 22nd of October, 1844, is 1,533 days. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, so we can connect maybe the 1533 to this period as well, through this here. Uh, we, can, we can come to it by adding the 252s and the 777. And we could say that this here period here is also a glorious manifestation of the power of God. Um, it's uh, interesting to see that uh, the, the structure at the end, you see 273, right? Yeah. And if you count back from the end, you have March 27, yeah, yeah, which symbolizes the 273, right? Yes. And at the beginning you have the same, the first way mark, uh, 65 days to May 6, which is also the sixth day of the fifth month, right? Yes. So you see both beginning and end is... Yeah, so Enoch was 65 years old in this here and it, so Methuselah was born on the sixth day of the fifth month so we, it was 65 yeah and I also have uh, this here 252 days can be divided into 65 days then and 187 and if you project 187 days to here and on the 14th of May uh, 2020 uh, this is a day where the Pope has invited world leaders and just influential people to a conference uh, in the Vatican in Rome. It's called Reinviting Global Education Alliance. Re re sorry, reinventing, reinventing the Global Education Alliance. So there's potential that that there could be a significant way mark there's one, one the rest for the for the planning for the climate yeah and, and one of the the sections of his proposals that he wants to discuss is having sunday as a day of rest to have uh, to lessen the impact of global warming mm -hmm. as well and then you from there, yeah, and then so from there you have 65 days, <coughs> which parallels mirror. So it's like a mirror. Mirrors this here, 65, which will bring you to July 18 and 2020. So I had mentioned that um, the Tsar of Ages, chapter 45, is called the foreshadowing of the cross, and we have the cross here, and this is like the shadow of it. So I'm connecting the sixth hour, panium, uh, lining up in, in this here period, it's sort of pointing to the cross. And I'm going to put the ninth hour here. Well, I have put it there. So the ninth hour, I'm lining up with Nagasaki, and this would be the Sunday law. And from here, it's uh, the 11th hour workers, 
uh, are being harvested or uh, yeah in this year time period um, so that's uh, July 18 and 25th of December there so we have the, the sun we need the sun to shine onto the cross to create uh, the shadow and Japan uh, the name of Japan means Nippon and if you Google it, what Japan means. It means the origin of the sun, or the la it's also called the land of the rising sun. And um, so we, we connect uh, the sun rising then uh, to these events. Uh, if you do that, it will connect you to Malachi 4, verse 2, uh, where we have the, the sun of righteousness rising with healing in his wings. Um, before I get there, uh, discuss that. Uh, we have also Potsdam Declaration means beneath the oaks. And we can also therefore place, an oaks is obviously a tree and uh, the Bible says, cursed is a, 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 everyone that it's hung, hung upon a tree. Uh, so we can, I'm not too sure whether the cross was made of oak or not, but uh, we can maybe connect that to, to being in, uh, to here as being beneath the oaks. Beneath the oaks, the foreshadowing, you have Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And what the, the Potsdam Declaration uh, involved was, there was, it was made by the United States, uh, Great Britain and China. And... Um, Truman said uh, what people theorize as being a warning concerning Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs that were going to take place and, and, and his final threat that they, they issued to Japan. He said, uh, expect a rain of ruin from the air, the like of which has never been seen on this earth. So um, the atomic bomb was also uh, developed. Really, there was a town called Oak Ridge that was established in 1942. This town was just created to build uh, the, the atomic bomb. And uh, so Adelio pointed out yesterday that Japan, the word count, is 42, isn't it? And so uh, we have Oak Ridge as well being a town that's created in, in 1942 for this nuclear bomb. And um, we have Malachi 4 verse 2 is the son of righteousness rising up with healing in his wings. And we have here Japan being symbolized by the, the, the rising sun as well. And uh, we could even connect Samuel Snow's letter in July 18, 1844. It was the fourth month and the second day of the biblical calendar when that was wrote. So you have like another 4-2 there. Um, so this here, we can plug in Oak Ridge as well, connecting us here. This is like beneath the oaks. And we, it's also interesting that uh, in 1844, around that time period, it was uh, Rachel Oaks, who was a Seventh-day Baptist, who brought the message of the Sabbath to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so maybe you could also plug in Rachel Oaks leading here, the Sabbath, message of Sabbath relating to the Sunday law. And so that's, she's coming here and, um, and then you have, this would be 18th July, the 22nd of October, 1844, then the third angel relating to the Sunday law. And so you have Oaks related there. She was actually born on the on the 2nd of March in uh, 1809 
So she can even be plugged in to this here structure here. And the 2nd of March in 2019 in the rabbinic calendar was the 25th day of the 12th month. And so at the end of that structure, we also have the 25th day of the 12th month as in being represented by the 25th of December as well. Um, so, so this was how I was originally applying it. And then yesterday, Elder Jeff was wanting to place July 18, rather than placing uh, July 18 here, and then the 9th, uh, the 25th of December, relating to the Nagasaki and the 9th here. Um, you're wanting to, in a sense, place in a fractal sense. Uh, do you want to maybe expand on that again, or you had a, an idea of? No, I, I, I don't remember what you're saying. Um, and, and you, you were having like the cross. You were wanting, wait a second. You were wanting the cross here. Find out where Rachel's buried. Where? Yeah, I think she gets buried under a tree. Yeah, she gets buried under the oak of in Bethel, okay, which is so high. Rachel Oaks gets buried under an oak tree as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. Rachel and Oak. Yeah. I'll okay. say that. So she's at the beginning and end of that line. Yes. Emphasizing the Sabbath. So uh -huh. what you're asking is. Mm -hmm. You were, I was understanding you to put the 6th and the ninth kind of close together like you started over there. Mm -hmm. And I thought we should be putting the 6th at the midnight cry and the ninth at the Sunday law. The 6th the at July yeah. 18th, 2020 and the, yes. the ninth at the December 25th. Yes. Um, but you were showing Elijah going all the way up to the ninth. Mm -hmm. yes. And I wasn't understanding when you were doing that that there's two Elijahs. Mm -hmm. Elijah's going to go up to the sixth. Yes. And then he's going to go up to the ninth as well. Mm -hmm. So I think our discussion was before we settled that. Right, okay, so I can write this. Oh, I don't know. So, um. But Elijah's going to take place mm -hmm. twice. Once in the history of the priests and once in the history of the Levites. Yes. And perhaps again in the history of the mm -hmm. 11th hour workers. Yes, because he's representing the 144,000. And he comes before the day of the Lord. Yes. And so uh, you, you were saying about Rachel Oaks. Yeah, it's in Genesis 30. Um, oh, you were going to go there? <clears throat> well, I had, I had noted it. And... Um, Genesis 35, verse 8. <clears throat> so we can go there if you want to read that out. Genesis 35, verse 8. But Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak. That's Deborah, Rebecca's nurse. Okay, so it's not Rachel. <laughs> but there, I think Rachel gets buried under a tree. And Jacob's... Okay, it's down further. Um... Yeah, 19. 19. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave that is the pillar of Rachel's grave to this day. And no, there's not a tree there. There's a pillar. Um, <laughs> yes. Which is um, unfortunate. But it's in the story close to her nurse dying yes. and buried under a tree. Mm -hmm. It's nearly there. Uh, yeah. That, the, the tree that um, Deborah is buried under is called the oak of weeping, so um, so we can maybe place out there as well. Um, crisis. Well, we're, we're sure though that a pillar, the Sabbath is a pillar. Mm -hmm. So she's buried. Her her death is the Sabbath pillar at the mm -hmm. beginning and the end. It works just as good as the oaks, right? Not as good, but yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So the Christ was on the cross. <laughs> Uh, from the third hour to the ninth hour, but it's from the sixth hour to the ninth hour where we have, have darkness. And um, so we could also slot in uh, a period of darkness here. You're in, you're in the shadow of the cross, and so it's your, the sunlight is being blocked out as well by the cross. 
and in the history of 1 Kings 18, this is where the priests of the grove are slashing themselves and there's like a, a false, if you represent them as being like a false uh, loud cry as well happening at that time period. So another thing I found out recently was that uh, James White died on the 6th of August in the year 1881. Uh, 81, maybe a, a symbol Indian. as well. Yeah, with the priest as well. And in the biblical calendar, it was on the 10th day of the 5th month, which ties in to July 18, <coughs> being on the 10th day of the 5th month in the uh, Julian calendar. And, and the 10th day of the 5th month, uh, you, you can tie that in with Jeremiah chapter 52, verse, uh, I can't remember, but uh, it's also in Ezekiel chapter uh, 20, verse 1, uh, the tenth day of, of the fifth month, and that was four years before the destruction of Jerusalem. And um, so, in a sense, with James White representing the Seventh day Adventist Church, he's like the first king, um, if, you, if you could say, if you're going to compare him to Saul of Israel, he's, he's the first leader of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, even though he wasn't the first elected, it was John Byington, but he was principally uh, the leader. And he, uh, so on the 10th day of the fifth month, he dies in the sense that the signaling, pointing forward to July 18, as being a, a time period on the 10th day of the 5th month when the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is, in a sense, ending as well, in a sense, dying. There's probably, you could maybe tie it in here as well, but uh, I think the church dies in, and, and this, the church dies here, and then the, the, and then the Levites are, are gathered in. Yeah. Um, you said that from... November, no, from January 20th, 2017 until July 18th, 2020, Trump's in office three and a half years. Yes. Which at one level is how many? Well, well 1260. 1260. The there's a fast, the famine of Elijah. It's, uh, okay. Sorry. Pillar mentioned uh, where Rachel is bu bu uh, buried, it means stump of a tree or stump of a tree. Stump of a tree, we got her. Okay. Where, what, what means stump of a tree? The, the pillar. pillar. Where Rachel's, Rachel's nurse. The, oh, pillar, the, pillar? the pillar that he put on Rachel's oh. grave was made from the stump of a tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Um, I'm sorry, I got you off track again. No, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. So uh, I said I'd come back to this here, the meaning of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Um, so Hiroshima means White Island and Nagasaki means Long Cape. And uh, if you think of a White Island, this is, would be the sea, it would be an ordinary island, you know, would be a gas shape, so a White Island it's going to be something that gets here shape. Uh, Nagasaki means long cape. Uh, a cape is li really like a, you call it a promontory or a piece of land that juts into the sea. Um, so if we, we see in, in Matthew chapter 20, uh, the sixth hour and the ninth hour are tied together. And so if we're going to connect uh, the White Island and the Long Cape together, uh, we could just bring them together, I guess, here. <laughs> and so you have the, the cross represented by Hiroshima and Nagasaki as well. And that can be illustrated. Um, 
connected. Yes. So, yes, Matthew 20 connects them both, the sixth hour and the ninth hour, and we can connect them the sixth of August and ninth of August together. <coughs> so, in a sense that they're they're here as well. You know, and that kind of lines up Nagasaki here and, and connects them, them, them both. So, um, we'll turn to Malachi chapter 4 and we'll look at verses 1 to 6. So this is a connecting, the link to, to this chapter uh, is Japan, meaning the, the land of the rising sun. And in Malachi chapter 4, we have the sun of righteousness rising with healing in his wings. So, um, would someone like to read verse 2? But unto you that fear my name shall the sun of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves in the stall. So, where um, I'm connecting this here, Son of Righteousness, to Japan. And this here whole chapter has very much connotations to what we've been looking at um, in this study. Uh, if you read verse 1, it says, For behold, the day cometh, that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. This is obviously talking about the second coming, where the Lord will, uh, through the brightness, through his brightness, he'll destroy uh, the wicked. But we have a foreshadowing of this in the events of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. And there's like a similar, uh, like a, it's like a token uh, like a, of what is, is going to take place when the, when the, in the second coming. And then in verse 3 it says, And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Ashes uh, resulting in uh, which was what ha occurred after the, the bombs in Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki. Ashes also you see at the beginning of the prophecy of Josiah that there will be, uh, there's a prophecy of Josiah which is which Ezekiel references, uh, connects with his prophecy of 390 days and 40 days, where there's uh, ashes poured upon the altar. I think there's something I can't... Poured out of from the altar. Yeah. Just, yeah. You want me to read it? 13 verse 2. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Okay, thank you. First Kings 13, verses 2 and 3. And then in verse 4, it says, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. You're back in Malachi. So, so yes, Malachi chapter 4, verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Remember connects us to the fourth commandment. We're in verse 4 here as well. Uh, so it's connecting to the Sabbath. Uh, this here particular verse. Uh, so remember ye the law of Moses. 
uh, which can we connect to the law of God. And then as you brought out yesterday, that it's there's, 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 there's a distinction sometimes some of the church makes between the law of Moses and the law of God. And But in this here, it says, um, which I commanded unto him in Horeb um, for all Israel with statutes and judgments, uh, which we would then connect to being more specifically the law of Moses. And, and then... The law of Moses also being the law of God. Is that That's right. okay? Law and, the <clears throat> and so in this here, we can therefore connect Malachi 4.4 4 to being uh, the, the Sunday law time period. And it says in, in verse 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great, sorry, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And we've looked at First Kings 18 in this year period where this is, will be the day of the Lord happening from the 9th. Um, from here, yeah, from the, from the ninth here. And then so the, the great day of the Lord, so Elijah will be coming in this year period. And you can connect the 6th hour and the ninth hour in the story of First Kings 18 as well. And then... In verse 6 it says, And ye shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And he, sorry, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. At least I come and smite the earth with a curse. Um, so, so as you, you mentioned, you elaborated on that there verse yesterday. That's the Reformation and Revival that takes place as the mm. end approaches. Okay, yes. So uh, That's the time period we're living in right now for the mm -hmm. priests. So that would represent like, the harvest of the Levites and the 11th hour workers? Yep. Okay. That's the first one? Mm -hmm. Did we uh, read the first one? Read the first one? We did read the first one, yes, about the, the earth. Like burning of as, as an oven? We did that? We did. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, there's a... Um, just, I'll read a few Spirit of Prophecy quotes. Um, Review and Herald, September 10, 1903. She says, Oh that God's people had a sense of the impending destruction of thousands of cities, now almost given to idolatry. So there's going to be what we see happening in Hiroshima and Nagasaki is but a foretaste of what's going to be happening uh, to thousands of cities. Um, this is from, another quote from her is from Manuscript. 233-1902 she says the wrath of God will come upon all cities upon dwellings upon large buildings so suddenly that they who have the slightest imitation that these judgments are pending have no safety in dallying at all they are to flee at once we are living amid the pearls of the last days the wrath of God is preparing to come upon all cities, not all at once, but one after another. And if the terrible punishment in one city does not cause the inhabitants of other cities to be afraid and seek repentance, their time will come. When the Lord arriveth to shake terribly the earth, he will not cease until his work, is done, his work in punishment is done. The destruction will begin in certain places and the destruction of life will be sudden and but few will escape. I am instructed by revelation to say that the most solemn and overwhelming judgments are determined upon all people who have the light before them in the word of God but who have not followed it. And um, so far it's been like... Uh, nearly 75 years since 
um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs have gone. So the Lord has um, somewhat prevented that foretaste of events to come. Uh, he's, he's given the, the earth this here window. But there's, uh, in this here study, we're seeing that this here window of mercy, I think, to the world is, is about to, to close. We are understanding Trump's um, the last president of the United States. And uh, he's opening up light that these events are going to occur of this destruction, destruction of, um, of cities. And um, we believe it's, uh, there's evidence has been presented uh, to us that the 18th of July, uh, 2020, is, uh, is once there's going to be a city there that's going to uh, be having the, the judgment that occurred to Hiroshima. We, can, we have evidence to believe that. And then we can also connect another city. Uh, we don't, don't, know, don't know, we're not saying which, we don't know what city it is, but we give, there's evidence to connect another city then, uh, ha occurring on the 25th of December in 2021. And, uh, and then after that, there's going to be, Ellen White says, the destruction of thousands of cities in this year time period thereafter. And it's going to be happening one city after another. And as one city gets destroyed, there's going to be a, 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 a warning or a, a time of mercy um, for those in other cities that they come um, to acknowledge uh, that Christ is coming and he is Lord and that it's a time for them to be afraid if they if they're willing to be afraid to, because it is because we can see this is a very solemn uh, occasion and this is this is what we're looking at now is this solemn um, uh, the sixth and the ninth here the, to these two dates is, is the beginning of these here great and solemn events that are about to occur on the earth. So just a very, very solemn message if, if this is all, you know, what, you know I, I can't see if, if this is not the warning happening to us, if God is not giving us this warning, I'd, I'd like to see what, what other evidence is going to be because I think it's quite compelling, the evidence that God is opening up. But this is just not all... Um, man-made. This is just uh, something that I believe God is opening up to us. Uh, before this here, great climatic events that are about to take place on the earth. So is there any other comments before we close? Kathy? Sleeping? Sorry. <laughs> Am I putting you to sleep? <laughs> Okay. All right, sorry. Is there any other comments before we close in prayer? No. So let us close. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks that. Uh, You've enabled us to understand events in the future and uh, we we're seeking further clarity. Some things may be unclear to us. We may have some doubts about some of the things we've looked at, but there's a lot of evidence that we can, we, we can have faith and that you're opening up light concerning your destructive judgments upon the earth at the end of the world. And you want people to be warned. And Father, we just um, place ourselves under your care uh, to be servants, to obey you, and how you would ask us to share this message. We ask that you open up ways that this year message be proclaimed to others in the world who are seeking truth and to be aware of what's about to take place in the world. 
it is your desire that people be warned. And Father, may we be faithful and, and watching for your providence and opening up the way for that message to be shared, that lives be saved and uh, many souls be brought into your eternal kingdom of power and great glory. We give thanks for your love and care for us, your mercy, and watch care over us. Father, your blessing upon this ministry, FFA, and uh, I pray that those listening can um, be convicted over the studies that we're, we're looking at and be partakers of um, sharing the light that's coming out and even that if you can guide them to contribute further evidence to these things as well. We ask that as well. Um, your blessing upon us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.